Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and I am back. Yes, come on. And I'm going to make up for lost time. I'm going to post every single weekday a tricky question. And then on the weekend, I'm going to post a longer video, like a past paper or something like that. Um, hopefully, this will be really helpful for you in the lead up to your exams. And if it is, then please do drop a like and even consider becoming a member. I've got two members now. Let's go. The, whoever those two people are, the absolute legends. Okay. Um, here we go, this is a tricky question, and I'm looking forward to this one, a bit of implicit differentiation. So, if I were to differentiate this part, this 4y squared, then I would want to differentiate that with respect to x. But the problem is, is that is a y function. So instead, what I do is I just differentiate it with respect to y, and then I multiply by dy by dx, and you can see these two sides are equivalent because I could just cross out these dy's and they are exactly the same. And what is it when I differentiate with respect to y? Well, it is 8y, and then I multiply by dy by dx. So that is how we differentiate implicitly. Okay, so with that being said, I can get rid of that now, and I can move you up here. Lovely. Okay. So, um, the next term, plus 3x, well that differentiates to 3, nice and straightforward. And this next one is a product. So if it's a product, what I like to do is just highlight the first function like that, and then highlight the second function like that. Because what we're going to do is we are going to differentiate the yellow one first, and that's again implicit, so differentiating 6y gives me 6, but then I must multiply by dy by dx and then I keep the green one exactly the same. I put a plus sign in the middle, and now this time I keep the yellow one exactly the same, and I differentiate the green one, which is gonna give me minus two e to the minus two x, because e to the x differentiates to itself, but because the input is minus two x, we take the derivative of that, which is minus two, and we multiply it by the coefficient, so we put it at the front. Lovely. Okay, um, let's try and tidy this up uh, in one step. I'm going to move this one to that side because it's negative. That will make it positive. And I'm going to um, move this one to this side to collect all the dy by dx's on the same side. So that's going to give me 3. This is minus 12. So when I moved it to the other side, it becomes plus 12. That's y and also e to the minus 2x equals, I've got this 6 dy by dx e to the minus 2x, and I'm moving this 8y dy by dx to the other side, so it becomes a negative. So I get this. Okay, great. So this allows me now to factorize the right-hand side uh, and take out a dy by dx. So I'm left with the factor of 6e to the minus 2x minus 8y, and I can then divide through by that factor to isolate dy by dx and solve part a for a lovely five marks. Thank you very much. Yes, please. Okay, uh, I should write dy by dx equals, obviously. There we go. Right, that was part A. This is part B. So it says the curve crosses the y-axis at the origin and at the point P. Hmm, that's suspicious. Well, if it crosses the y-axis at the origin and at the point P, it means that the point P, which I can see we're going to need to use, must have an x-coordinate of 0 because it goes through the y-axis which means that its x-coordinate is 0. And then it will have some y-coordinate, which we don't know yet. But what we could do is we could sub it into our original curve, and that will tell us exactly where it crosses the y-axis if we sub in x equals 0. So we can write x equals 0. This implies that we have 4y squared plus 3 times 0 is 0, and then we have 6y, and then e to the minus 2 times 0 is just 0, and e to the 0 is 1, so times it by 1, we don't need to write. 
Okay, this is good because now what it means is I can divide by two and write it all on one side like that. So divide by two and then move the, the other term over. And that means I can factorize out uh, a y, uh, which confirms the fact that it crosses the origin as well. Because at x equals zero, we now have y equals zero, which means it goes through the origin. And we also have two y minus three to solve that. To make that zero, y must equal three over two. Perfect. Okay, so this must be the point P, because uh, it tells us that it goes through the origins. So that's a separate solution to the fact x equals zero. So that tells me that P is uh, three over two for the y. Great. And now it says find the equation of the normal to the curve at P. Right, well, what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to find dy by dx. So dy by dx at P means that we um, have an x coordinate of 0 and a y coordinate of 3 over 2. So dy by dx, well, we have it down here, don't we? So it's going to be 3 lots of 12 times 3 over 2 and then e to the 0 all over 6e to the 0 minus 8 lots of 3 over 2. Um, that looks good to me. Okay, let's do some simplifying. So that's 3 plus um, 18 over 6 minus 12 which is 21 over negative 6. So that is um, minus 7 over 2. Yeah, perfect. Uh, and it says find the equation of the normal. So the normal gradient, because what we've just worked out, is the gradient at the point P. So that's always the gradient of the tangent. So the gradient of the normal is the negative reciprocal, which means we flip and we change the sign. So it's 2 over 7. And now we just need to write the equation of that normal, which is y equals, well, the gradient is 2 over 7x. And do we have the c constant? No, we don't. We need to sub in... Um, Oh no, of course we do, because it goes through P, P is actually on the Y axis. So therefore the intercept is 3 over 2. Just subbing in the point P, which we know is definitely on the normal, is going to give me um, that the intercept is 3 over 2. So bosh, there we go, the intercept is 3 over 2. Lovely days. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that, and I will see you tomorrow. Let's go!